scene opens with some more gratuitous footage of me assembling furniture. I'm soon going to take this furniture, put it in the screened-in porch, and use it to draw on some birch panels. These birch panels were sent to me by Midwest Products, who has sponsored this video, and I'm very thankful for that. They offered some wood panels to me at a nice quality birch, and I said, hey yeah, I could make art on those. So they're a producer of great birch panels that we're going to be using today. Check out their website in the description. They also produce craft wood, crafting kits, and various tools for artists. So thank you. You'll see me unbox a, a whole bunch of panels that they sent me and we used, uh, we're going to use a 16 by 20 inch one today. Once I had all my furniture set up for the project correctly, my preparation of the actual panel was pretty similar to what I did in a previous video where I was working on these wood panels, uh, except this time I put on three coats of the water-based polyurethane and I sanded with 400 grit sandpaper between each coat, letting it dry for two hours between each coat. And once again, after a, a final sand on top of the, the whole coating process, the purpose of this was so that First of all, I think the nice smooth surface of the polyurethane helps let the, 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 paint, ten, the paint pen tips last a little bit longer and also prevents the, the paint from seeping into the actual wood grain of the wood. These paint pens can really draw on almost anything. Weirdly enough, they draw on, almost on paper the worst. So I've got all my other pens that were good on, good on paper, but these Posca paint pens are pretty much good for everything else, right? They work good on on, on wood or polyurethane coated wood or metal or glass or plastic, skin, right? They work really good on all sorts of surfaces, but I was, in, in my limited experience, if you use them on wood, there is a slight, uh, barely noticeable effect where the, you know, the paint seeps into the, the grain of the wood and it feathers out a little bit. So a little bit of the polyurethane coat protects the nibs, helps them last longer, and keeps the lines nice and crisp. Now another thing I did in this video that's different from the last one is that I have some nice uh, golden acrylic heavy body paints. And I don't really know what the heavy body part means. It sounds intense, almost as if it's related to maybe nuclear science or something. That's where my mind goes. I have, I'm, I'm guessing there's not actually anything. It's not related at all, but uh, there's also like I think the op is, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, isn't the opposite of heavy body acrylics? They don't call them light body acrylics, they call them liquid, right? Anyways, I, it, it was, the stuff is really thick. Like I bought like a big tub of it for like 30 bucks. They're, it's heavy, thick, expensive, and I had to like mix it with water as I applied it. So I, I made a few big splotches across the wood of just the black acrylic to be like a dark background to, to have something to sink back right? And then I could draw all my little lines and stuff and then add some other blacknesses. I don't really know how to describe it, but basically I didn't want it to be a, I mean, it's fine to do it the other way where I just kind of have like a drawing floating in the middle of the panel. But I, in this case, I kind of wanted it to be a, like a form or a drawing emerging out of the darkness of the panel. And uh, I think it turned out pretty good. Also, you'll see at the end, uh, it's kind of hard to see in the pictures I posted on Instagram because Instagram does like a lot of compressing and uh, I don't know, probably because of the lighting and the filters I put on there or whatever. I don't usually do a lot of, I do some filters, but I, I try to, I think it's actually possible to use filters to get the picture to look more like it looked like in real life. Because sometimes you take a picture and you look at the picture on your phone or whatever next to the real thing and it doesn't really look like it. But some of those filters can help it look more like what you're seeing in real life. And uh, anyways, I didn't quite get it this time. Uh, what you'll see is at the end, near the end of this video, I also used a white Posca pen to draw some... There's a lot of like noodly spaghetti things going on here and I used, used the white Posca pen to draw some more noodly spaghetti things going across the blackness, across my, my dark expanse in the middle of the panel, and also to draw kind of like some highlights on some other areas, which didn't show up quite as much, but maybe it is good for it to be subtle like that. 
And also, I will just say it was really nice to um, sit and work in my little screened-in porch. Like, I could, um, I don't know, like, fresh air. Uh, I Sometimes I would work at night. You, you might be able to see from the different stages of this video, sometimes I was working at night and maybe the lighting didn't seem quite so natural because I would have, like, a lamp on in there. And I think everyone that ever walked by or drove by could probably sit me, see me sitting there huddled and hunched over my table drawing away. Uh, but <laughs> like one, one time, one, one lady, like I can, I, I like watching all the people like walk by and drive by. There's people like cycling and walking other uh, dogs and uh, walking with their kid. And one lady was like, well, you've got a nice little office space in there. I was like, yeah, plenty of fresh air. And it was like, it was like right after I had finished this piece and I was so close to being like, do, do you guys want to come see this thing? I just. I just finished this drawing like I was like in that weird state of euphoria where I like have just finished this thing and I wanted to like share it with someone which that fix I usually get by posting on Instagram but I don't think I ended up posting on Instagram for like one or two more days but right then I was like but then I don't know they were like total strangers so I didn't you know my I, I don't think I have a lot of social anxiety but I have like something held me back from either bringing it out to them or inviting them into my porch to look at my new art I had just finished but uh, I was like yes you guys have to see this I just finished it it's, it's my best thing ever because right so a lot of times I don't like I don't feel like now but there's like that that that, that little stage of euphoria right when I finish something where I, I always just for a brief moment there's like a flare of of hope where I think maybe this this is it you know my masterpiece uh, but then that kind of fades away. I'm like, no, no, I need to need to move on. I need to work on the next thing, the next thing. Or the, a hundred, I, I think deep down in my mind, I think the piece, a hundred things, a hundred pieces from now, that will probably be my masterpiece. So I need to go ahead and do a hundred more pieces. I think that's one thing that keeps me motivated to keep putting out artwork and drawings. I know that I will only get better by doing a lot of work, and thankfully, it doesn't feel like a chore or a grind as much as it sounds like, uh, because I do enjoy each piece, and uh, each piece is like a little, little more space to experiment or explore, even if they all do kind of look a little bit the same. Every now and then, I get these comments on Instagram, and I kind of wonder. They're like, "Hey, Peter, uh, you know, how about trying something different for a change, or uh, ones ones that are a little bit less." Um, tactful and they're like well another one that looks the same or all of these are starting to look the same and I'm sitting there wondering I'm like I'm you know like self-analyzing like, am I really stuck in a rut or is this just the the like the human result of being just one singular person that all my art looks like it was done by the same person like that seems like a natural thing right like, I don't mean to compare myself to the Beatles, but if you took a bunch of Beatles music and listened to it, you wouldn't be like, huh, well, it all sounds like it was done by the Beatles. You know, when will they do something different that doesn't sound like the Beatles? Of course, stuff all done by the same person is going to seem like it's all done by the same person. Like, I don't know. So I don't, but, but I don't also, I also don't want to, you know, give myself like excuses to not branch out and try new different things. But I also don't think I've totally exhausted this style or whatever my style is. I think that I will naturally move on to drawing other things once I've done everything that's that there is to do here. Like once my brain is bored of like whatever I'm doing here, like I, I've kind of got a few different things like little mechanical things that I draw sometimes or blobby things or weird people, stuff like that. Whatever my style happens to be at the moment, I think I'll just naturally keep doing that until my brain gets bored with it and wants to latch onto something else. I don't think it's artistically help, healthy to, I don't know, like beat yourself up for what you're drawing or, f or fight against yourself. Sometimes I think that probably does work for some people and it does help to um, kind of creatively jumpstart yourself to have an assignment maybe for school. I have found that, uh, you know, that I definitely when I was in school that 
I, I did end up drawing things that, and, and creating things I never would have created otherwise because there was an assignment for it. But I don't think uh, those ever ended up being some of my best pieces or the pieces that I was most proud of. And they only kind of influenced me tangentially. Like, they didn't change my life or my whole art artistic style either. I mean, I went to, you know, interior architecture school for a year, but I think the biggest influence it had on me was that I started drawing some slightly more architecturally looking things. I'm not sure. I mean, I could be too close to the situation. Anyways, so there was... Anyways, anyways, there's some... Uh, some self-reflection for you that could be totally wrong. Anyway, so, some artists draw like like 50 paintings that are all you know, all the same thing. Monet's haystacks, you know? Like, do you think he was drawing, you know, 37 or whatever haystacks? And then there are people sitting around like, okay, when are you going to draw something else? Something new, please. You know, I don't know. He just sat around and did what he wanted. I think I'll do the same thing. It's going to be okay. I'm, I'm happy with how this turned out, and uh, yeah, I think I'm going to try doing some more of these big panels. I coated this one with spray varnish uh, that I got from uh, Jerry's. Love that place. There's like a whole a warehouse version of Jerry's here where they sell things for wholesale. You have to buy like a $20 membership, and then you get things even cheaper there than they are on Amazon. I know, crazy. So I sprayed it, a bunch of different coats. I think it turned out pretty good. Mm. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. See ya.